Hey everyone, this episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by HelloFresh and Drop, but first, the weird news. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Nice. Him being young Jacob Wall. Oh, here we go again. Oh, he's the most prolific of the Weekly Weird characters. Yeah. Uh, he is constantly busy. Yep, he is out there like Bugs Bunny, just getting up to trouble all the time, and mm -hmm. Elmer Fudd just can never seem to catch him, but... That may have changed. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a regular watcher of our shows, you know all about Jacob Wool. But uh, to be fair, we haven't heard a whole lot from him over the past few months. Mm. There was, well, actually, the last time we talked about him was like three weeks ago. But yeah. things have calmed down in general. They've been a little quieter than usual on the Jacob Wool front. And one might optimistically assume that Jacob Wool had a, a realization about how literally everything he does instantly turns to shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, maybe... He's looking to change his ways or turn things around while he's he's still so young. He's got his whole life ahead of him. No, I doubt. I seriously doubt that that is the case. I, well, I would you would assume, be correct. I would assume that he was being quiet because of legal reasons. You are 100% correct. Yeah. Good. Uh, and and he's, he's also just up to his old, same old shit. As Instagram followers of young Mr. Wool have noted uh, last week, his most recent pathetic attempt at relevance was posting selfies of himself location tagged at different parts of the world. Real jet setter, this guy. Yeah. But uh, all these pictures very conspicuously featured the exact same location. Listen, he likes what he likes. <laughs> he wants a certain atmosphere, and he seeks out places that are similar in all of these different countries. I have. I bring my patio with me wherever I go. Yeah. Uh, these are. This is a portable patio. This is just like the uh, the Instagram model that got caught doing it because the same exact cloud was in the sky every single time. Well, that's a filter. Mm. It's oh. a cloud filter. Okay, so yeah. he went a little bit deeper. Yeah, no, this is uh, literally just Jacob Wool uh, sitting on his patio uh, in the same chair. Probably taking, wearing an ankle bracelet. Taking pictures of himself smoking Cuban cigars uh -huh. and tagging himself at various parts of the world. Wait, those are illegal. Well, uh, yeah, so when one of Wool's followers commented on uh, Wool's Belarus selfie featuring the same background as his Tel Aviv selfie, his reply was simply, doesn't matter. I mean, it's a good reply. And now we may have some more context on why none of this really matters. Uh, Jacob Wall has been charged with a felony. Who couldn't have seen this coming? And it's something that we've been questioning about Young Wall for months now. He can't keep getting away with it. And he might not this time. Well, yeah. anyways, what's funny about hearing about Jacob Wall being charged with a felony is that true Jacob Wall fans are left wondering, well, which crime was it? Uh, which one was it? The whole time I, I, I have a laundry list of possible Jacob crimes. Jacob Wall, felony? You're going to have to be a lot more specific yeah, than that. Yeah, please. Uh, the 21-year-old has been absolutely prolific about doing things over the last couple of years that sure as hell seem like blatant criminal acts. Uh, slander, libel, threats, lying to police, kidnapping. Which one was it? And we're going to go ahead this time and uh, not go into any in-depth discussion of the other stuff because it's there's just so much. We have plenty of videos that you can watch. A lot, like about a dozen at this point. Yeah, just watch those. Uh, give us those extra views. Anyways, no, uh, this is not related to any of those apparent crimes. It's a new crime. So, or an old crime, actually. Now, it's easy to forget, but before Jacob Wall reinvented himself as a savvy political operative and then failed at that repeatedly and spectacularly, he was a finance kid. In fact, he was supposedly the youngest hedge fund manager on earth while he was in high school. Wow. Uh, that honor quickly changed, though, from youngest hedge fund manager to youngest person to be banned for life from futures trading because from the start, he was allegedly just ripping off his clients. And this recent felony charge, it stems all the way back to then. Yeah, uh, the wheels of justice turn absurdly slow in a lot of cases. Um, so, yeah, the crime that might actually take down Jacob Wool allegedly occurred back in 2016 when he was trying to be a shitty low-rent Jordan Belfort before he tried becoming a shitty low-rent Roger Stone. Mm. And while financial crimes are a lot less scandalous than the more public types of crimes that Wool has been committing more recently, we should point out right off the bat that this finance case also includes the allegation that Jacob Wool is responsible for a person's death, at least indirectly. Wow. It's not funny, but it's true. I was fucking shocked when I read this part. And that makes the story a lot less fun. It makes Jacob Wool seem genuinely evil instead of just comically inept. No. Why not both, I guess? Uh, now, it's easy to look at financial crimes and dismiss it as just rich people fucking over other rich people. But what's actually often the case is desperate people being taken advantage of and losing everything. And that's what's alleged to have happened here. 
So in June of 2016, a man in Arizona identified only as David called up the Riverside County District Attorney's Office telling him that he'd invested $75,000 through the Riverside, California-based Wool Investment Group, who uh, promptly lost all of it. David, the tipster, later killed himself. It's not clear how much losing the 75000 influenced his decision to end his life, but it's hard to imagine that that wasn't a factor. I would imagine so. so. Yeah, it sounds like Jacob Wall, in addition to everything else, is at least possibly, partly, in a small way, potentially responsible for a man's death. He's got a body count. Yeah. Anyways, a month after David's initial tip to the Riverside DA, Wall and his business partner Matthew Johnson quickly started up a new company called Montgomery Assets. But investigators were able to easily track them down and do a little sting operation to gauge just how shady these young dudes actually were. Yeah, so it turns out uh, pretty shady. Wow, could you imagine? It turns out that starting their new company, they had not mended their ways. They were simply uh, covering their tracks. Mm -hmm. So an investigator for the DA office called up Montgomery Assets, pretending to be a real estate agent, saying that he had a client interested in investing. And Wool and Johnson, they took meetings with the DA investigator and his client, who was actually an undercover detective. Mm -hmm. Eventually, Wool's company gave the detective a promissory note saying that in exchange for wiring them $100,000, their new client would receive a 17% rate of return on his investment into their house flipping business. Now, legally speaking, what they were offering was a security, and securities need to be registered with the government, in this case, the state of California. This one was not. Therefore, Wool and Johnson had committed the crime of illegally selling unregistered securities. Now, what's really unclear here is why it took three years for the Riverside DA to actually file charges when they seem to have gotten everything they needed in July and August of 2016. The case had a three-year statute of limitations on it, and they waited until the last possible minute to actually file charges, which is odd and kind of makes you wonder how many people get away with this kind of thing because the law just doesn't act quickly enough. In any case, on Wednesday, we and much of the internet were delighted to see that Jacob Wall was now wanted on a felony arrest warrant and was therefore technically a fugitive. Oh, well, man. I was he really, better come back from Belarus. I was really excited for him to like actually make a run for it. Like It seems like something he would have the confidence to try to do. And we could all watch it live on a police chase. Yeah. That would have been awesome. Mm -hmm. But alas. Yeah, Wool's fugitive status did not last long as the warrant was quickly recalled, which Wool happily told NBC reporter Brandy Zadronzi when she reached out to him. And yes, the warrant had been recalled, but that's because Wool actually showed up to court, so there was no longer any need for the warrant. The Spin King is back. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, if you're hoping to see Jacob Wall in an orange jumpsuit, that hasn't happened yet. He appeared in court in response to his arrest warrant, and a judge scheduled his actual arraignment, where his charges will be laid out, for October 24th. So we've got a month and a half before the case progresses. Uh, but in the meantime, it's entirely possible that Jacob Wall will manage to get himself into other completely unrelated trouble, whether that's slandering politicians and law enforcement officers, sending himself death threats, and then reporting those false death threats to police, uh, coercing and intimidating other people into slandering politicians, sending death threats to witnesses in criminal investigations, or something more benign, like lying about what he overheard in coffee shops and pretending to be in foreign countries when he's really at home. It could be anything. And with the fact that this case took this long to to finally get uh, into the courts, uh, maybe those other ones are pending as well. Yeah, now that we've... Especially the coffee shop. Now that we've seen the, the speed of justice, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he, it, there could be a lot more, uh, you know, criminal... Uh, he, he, there might be some more warrants down the line. I just want to see Wall representing himself in court and then pleading to the judge saying, Your Honor, my client clearly pointing to himself couldn't have done this because my client is an idiot. Yeah, well, his dad will probably represent him. His dad is representing oh, him. <laughs> yes. this, can, can, is, <laughs> does court TV still exist? Can we watch this? I don't know if California courts allow cameras. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They did what, for the OJ trial. But uh, I look forward to, obviously, courtroom drawings because that is an art form unto itself. Mm -hmm. uh, they should and, hire a, uh, uh, one of the people from Six Flags to do the courtroom drawing for this one. <laughs> Yeah. He, and wrote, I, he wrote into the courtroom wearing roller skates and eating a big popsicle. Can you believe it? Yeah. And th this is, this does give uh, it gives the, the people on the Jacob Wall beat, the writers like Will Summer, and there's like there's like five or six writers who have been following Jacob Wall specifically. That's mm -hmm. been their assignment for like three years now. They go to every one of his events. They've got a month and a half to plan their travel to 
beautiful Riverside, California, yeah. uh, for this case and cover it, you know, comfortably. And Could you imagine accurately. getting like the uh, the jury summons in the mail and showing up and being and then going to the part where they're like, "All right, we have to make sure that you don't know or have any kind of yeah. predisposition." Oh, is that corn cob guy? Yeah, his name is Jacob Wall. Holy shit, really? I mean, I have no idea who he is. No, I've never heard of him. <laughs> I'm, and you know what? I would love to be on this case. I, For I no just, reason other than I'm very interested in court. I actually just quit my job, so I, I've got all the time in the world yeah. to be on this jury. <laughs> Thank you very much. Say his name again? Jacob Paul. Holy shit. I mean... Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah I mean, he, he can get up to all sorts of schemes in the next six weeks. That is a lifetime in Jacob Wool time. This guy is 21 years old. And he's yeah. already lived... More, yeah. more scams than... He could even uh, get assistance from uh, other chronic failures still, like Laura Loomer and Jack Berkman. Maybe yeah. they'll show up in court as character witnesses. My favorite Jacob Wall like, releases are his collabs, yeah. where he teams up with other uh, grifters. Big fan of the Jacob Wall IRL mixtape. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, anyways, we're, we're going to see how this all plays out, obviously, but the, the good news is it's looking like the law has finally caught up with Jacob Wall. I am not confident that he's going to prison, though. Neither am I. This guy's got some weird, like... He's slippery. He he did some witchcraft shit when he was a teenager. Mm -hmm. Read too many Harry Potter books. I, yeah, I don't know. Like, the fact that he's gotten this far does not make me confident in anything happening to him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it could it could be, on the other hand, where it could be a Martin Shkreli situation where, like, under normal circumstances, it, it, it would be a slap on the wrist. But he's just but so dumb. But because he's such a fucking piece of shit, the judge will just be like, ah, no, you're going to prison. We're going to put you in solitary confinement. He will try to break out of that prison. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, whew. guys, something to look forward to. Something to eyes Make on the, the time prize. go by. Yeah. yeah. And, and speaking of things in the future to look forward to mm. and recurring topics on this show. Jeez. Well, would you look at the calendar? By golly, Storm Area 51 is just around the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only been about two months since the whole meme about storming Area 51 because they can't stop all of us. Took the internet by storm. But like all memes, for most of us, the fun has largely faded away thanks to both just the passage of time and uh, the fact that brands almost immediately tried to co-opt this organically grown internet meme into a way to sell more products. Like the vultures they are. Mm. Taking something beautiful and just ruining it. Oh, geez. Walmart's putting up the Area 51 decorations in July. Come on. Let us get through Independence Day first. This used to be a family holiday. <laughs> Now, the original Facebook event, created by Bakersfield weeb Maddie Roberts, attracted millions of RSVPs and prompted various official responses from local governments and the military, despite clearly being a joke. But I guess they, you know, better they have to take sorry. it serious. And, uh, yeah, we, we all had a nice good laugh at the whole thing. It was fun. Uh, but the original event date, you will recall, was September 20th. And with enough time to actually plan for an influx of visitors to the local area around Area 51, multiple actual real-life events popped up looking to capitalize on the meme. Mm -hmm. Don't let your memes be dreams. No. Well, there's so three events in particular. Though as of last week, that number has dropped to two. So, That's sorry. Nice dust. Yeah. Peace Stock 51, uh, that was supposed to take place in uh, Amargosa at the actual location listed on the original Facebook event. That was canceled after officials in Nye County denied their permit request and uh, they were unable to secure a new location, just like Woodstock. Nye County notably preemptively declared a state of emergency in anticipation of Area 51 weekend for good reason. The county's infrastructure, resources, and services just simply aren't equipped to deal with thousands of people there at once. No. It's a problem. But it sounds like the event organizers of Peace Stock 51, they weren't able to make a compelling enough argument that their event would not end up being an absolute shit show, so they're out. Yeah. Well, while there won't be an Area 51 event at the original intended location, and therefore, no cat house. Oh, they're... That was, yeah, the original... Very sad. This is the one that was going to be right next door to a brothel. They should need to do a pop-up brothel. Brothel food truck. Yeah, why can't, why can't you make a mobile brothel? Uh, well, I, I would say no one's tried it yet. Why can't you? Well, let's see. Well, anyway, yeah. Over on the north side of the, the pussy area... pussy wagon. <laughs> the north side of the Area 51 base, like 100 miles from this other side, because the Nevada desert is huge it's and empty. Uh, so on the north side of It takes the base, like three hours to get to, to either one if you drive Yeah, you there. can't really go in a straight line. No, that would be Area 51. That would be. That's why they really want to raid it. Too inconvenient to go uh, to the other side. It would be there. really cool if we could put a freeway right here. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, over there... You've still got alien stock in Rachel, Nevada at the Little A. Lee Inn and Storm Area 51 Base Camp over in Hiko, Nevada at the Alien Research Center. 
Uh, original Facebook event creator, Maddie Roberts, is apparently involved in alien stock. So if you're looking to keep things authentic and true to form for this meme, that's the event for you. Though the town of Rachel also previously sent out a strongly worded warning about what a bad idea this seemed like. And it's worth noting that uh, Rachel and Hiko have a combined population of just 150 people. And Rachel itself, the population is like 50. Yeah. So, But here's the thing about going to the Rachel one. It's actually a better location than the original one. They have room to like camp. And well, whatnot. and they have the actual landmarks that people want to see. Yes. The other side of it has a museum or whatever. But in Rachel's, it's like where the black mailbox is. It's where the it's closer to where the two gates are that people go yeah. take pictures in front of. Uh, and it has the little alien, which has been made famous throughout various movies and TV shows. Yeah, a tiny motel with like 10 rooms. And it and has a, t- a tow truck hanging a UFO yeah, off the back end. And a diner that seats roughly 40 people at once and is Get there never early. full. Get there early. The patty melt, probably great. Now, regardless, Lincoln County this week approved both events. So <laughs> you're good to go. They're happening. But the official Rachel website, a website that I can only imagine it hasn't like been shit. updated. I know, yeah. I know it looks like shit, but even that, like, they haven't probably updated this site in years. And now they're like, we got to hire a webmaster. Where's the password? <laughs> Does anyone know how to write HTML? Yeah. Ugh. So let's read what's up on their website now. Alien stock update. With less than two weeks to go, no visible preparations have been made for this event. No bans have been announced. It is more and more likely to turn into a Firefest 2.0, a non-event with no bans, very little infrastructure, and a lot of unhappy campers. Instead of paying a lot of money for a campsite on a dusty dirt lot among weeds and all sorts of nasty desert critters, please visit Rachel another time. If you choose to visit, stay away from the residential part of Rachel. Local landowners will step up to protect their property. (laughs) And if you think you will get fucking shot. Yeah, if you think it's uh, pretty simple to accidentally walk into Area 51, which it, which it is at parts, uh, accidentally walking into someone's property where you have no idea what the property the lines boundaries are. boundaries aren't really marked usually. Yeah, yeah. no, you, you're going to get filled with rock salt. At, at best. Mm-hmm. You'll pray for rock salt. <laughs> Please, God, let this just be rock salt. Yeah, so uh, this town of 50 people, uh, not too happy about the, the county approving uh, their their 50 person town to be overrun by like five to ten thousand people maybe more uh, and uh, yeah they're right that alien stock seems woefully unprepared at this point the the official alien stock website has no information Still. at all about specific musical acts or attractions it's all very vague and they're just ter- taking the field of dreams approach yeah <laughs> but um, they're not building it and it, it is like insanely just there's no specific information on this website at all, which is not a good sign for events, especially events in the middle of fucking desert, 50 miles from the nearest gas station. Uh, but yeah, it, lo- it looks like the only food options for the entire event will be the diner at the Little Alien and a single food truck that is taking pre-orders for meals, meaning you're not going to fucking get to eat just by Bring, walking up to this food. thing. You're going to have to order your meals two weeks in advance or you're just going to die out there. Yeah, it's like you're going somewhere... It's like doomsday prepping in order to survive out there. Yeah. Like, Burning Man pulls this off, but that's because everyone that goes to Burning Man has a million dollars and can afford to just bring, like, literally a bus full of, like, survival with them. Diplo landed there in a Popeye's jet and handed out chicken sandwiches. Damn mainstreams caught on, ruining my Burning Man. Can't even go drop acid in the dust anymore. Burning Man's so fucking lame. Uh, But, yeah. uh, Meanwhile, the owner of the little alien, uh, she seems stoked about all the business she's going to get. And she says that she sold 700 camping spots on her property, each wow. of which fits like eight people. So wow. that, that's a lot. But uh, this definitely sounds like it could easily devolve into Firefest 2.0, as the town of Rachel predicts. I would be surprised if the town of Rachel still stands if 10,000 people invade it. Like, I, it's just so remote. Like, there's nothing stopping from, n- nothing stopping the, the 50 people of Rachel from, like, you know, just throwing some fucking logs into the, onto the highway, lighting them on fire, and standing there with their guns just being like, uh-uh. Go back to Vegas. Yeah. Nope. The other thing that would suck is if, like, the owner of this inn got all prepped up and spent a bunch of money to, like, get all this stuff, and then no one shows up, and next thing you know, out of business. I mean, I... I, I you know how many cans of tomato sauce she had to buy to prep for this? Oh, jeez. I mean, she's, if, if it goes well, she stands to make more in this weekend than she Ever? would in an entire year. Yeah. So, that's so cool. I, for her sake, I hope it works out. I hope the cat house can get, put a pussy wagon together yeah. 
and drive it over to Rachel. Come on, there's got to be a trailer around here somewhere yeah. that fits some pussy. In Put it. some Xboxes in there. Yeah. Be a well. real party. Anyways, uh, it sounds like these events were only approved because not approving them could have been potentially worse. Uh, Lincoln County Sheriff Carrie Lee told The Atlantic this. The county feels like if they didn't approve the event, it doesn't matter. People are coming anyway. Maybe they won't come. Maybe all this is for naught. Maybe we've done all this planning and 500 people come. But we feel like we can't be behind the eight ball here. We've got to plan ahead for the worst case scenario. Yeah, so basically it's like, well, you know, at least if we approve this, there is an event. And there will be, like, some food yeah. and some water and some toilets. Yeah. If we don't approve... Uh, people are just going to come here to die. People are going to show up and they're going to die in our streets. Yes. If things, go, if things go wrong with this, it's more likely to happen at Alien Stock and Rachel than at the Area 51 base camp in Hico, though. Nerds. Uh, Alien Stock is building itself as a music festival, while base camp is very deliberately marketing itself to actual UFO enthusiasts and believers with guest speakers and documentary screenings in addition to music and food. Their website is also way more detailed than Alien Stocks, but hey, anything can happen and anything will happen. I look forward to seeing how this all turns out. It's just two weeks away. Yeah. I think the whole, everyone involved is very nervous. And they have good reason to be. I would agree with that. The, the odds are very stacked against this. Hey, pull it off and you'll be legendary. Yeah. Legendary. You want to puss out or you want to be a fucking legend? You'll be a legend. And you know what? You can drink your own pee at least once. Until it turns it goes, bright, it, bright orange. It goes bad after the first time. Mm -hmm. Not sterile after the first couple of times. <laughs> Anyways, before we get into headlines, this episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Bring it to the desert. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit delivery service, bringing you easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality, regardless of your comfort in the kitchen. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout food. HelloFresh has you covered. Break out of your dinner rut with 17 seasonal chef-curated recipes to choose from each week. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie-smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers. I am very excited to try out HelloFresh's new fall uh, catalog. Much like the, uh, uh, yeah. you need to change your wardrobe, you want to change the way you eat because uh, it's eventually going to get colder out. And I, I more hearty meals, more comfortable meals. I'm excited to try it. The summer I've, stuff has been very light and, and appealing. Yeah, the fall stuff you can expect probably a lot of uh, squashes, sweet potatoes, uh, which I'm a big fan of. Mm -hmm. I love a good squash. Some pork. Yeah, delicious. Um, yeah. They're way more creative than we are with the recipes, but I remember they last are. year it being very delicious. Yeah. The delicious stuff and was, uh, convenient. Very crisp, very uh, light. Loved it. Loved cooking it. Uh, and whenever I, you know, don't have that, I'm just like, well, I can cook some chicken in the oven, I guess. So it's very nice. It keeps I'm just me... just going to boil a chicken. Keeps, keeps me up on my cooking game. Yeah. Anyways, for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird80 and then enter code WeeklyWeird80 at checkout. This is going to get you $20 off each of your first four boxes. So go to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird80 and use promo code WeeklyWeird80 at checkout. And this episode is sponsored by Drop, formerly known as Mass Drop, and their exclusive new gaming headset. It's different than the one we tried before. Yeah. Made by, in collaboration with Koss. They collaborate with very good companies. Yeah. Koss made their, they made the world's first stereo headphones all the way back in 1958. The Drop and Koss GMR54X ISO combines exceptional Koss engineering with input from the Drop community to create a headset that really addresses the needs of gamers. And at just $50, it sounds and feels like a headset that costs a whole lot more. Yeah. The GMR 54X ISO features exceptional 3D sounds, great for gaming, and an adjustable, detachable microphone with a dedicated volume and mute switch. All in all, the Drop Plus Cost GMR 54X ISO delivers an exceptional gaming experience for a really good price, 50 bucks. It really puts you in the center of the action. It's comfortable, lightweight, and uh, it's you, you'll forget even that you're wearing it. Yeah, it is very lightweight, which mm -hmm. I appreciate. Uh, you'll be able to get this exclusively at drop.com, where it has a 4.5 star rating. And uh, you know, do some shopping around while you're there. Find out which headset's right for you. Drop has a huge collection of curated products and exclusive collaborations that you won't want to miss out on. If you're into mechanical keyboards, they have a lot. Okay. Uh, head over to the link on your screen. Uh, well, just use one down in the description. It's very easy to click. Get your cost GMR headset today. Link is in the description. Check out that headset over at Drop. And while you're there, uh, check out what else they've got. There's a lot. Yeah. Boom. And sip time. Very hot in here. 
Not as hot as uh, we make, Rachel, Nevada. We make fun of the people going to Area 51, yet here we are baking inside of a tall, a small, what used to be a, probably a child's bedroom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, here's some headlines. Yes. Man opens can of baked beans to find bean juice and only one bean. Just like the damn potato chip companies. Yeah. This this one was the, the picture of this guy holding his, his, one, four, bean. his one bean. This is just like the funniest fucking thing. Looks like he's from the Great Depression. Yeah, he, uh... That's good bean juice, though. Yeah, I mean, uh, what's wrong with bean juice, buddy? That's, you just chug it and you got all your protein for the rest of the day. Yeah, you don't have to chew. Yeah. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna Bring a bunch of right bean through. juice over to Area 51 and you'll be set. Yeah, I mean, most people in this country drink bean juice every morning. They're coffee beans. Yeah. But this is no different. A baked bean is a bean. And uh, I assume the juice is, uh, you know, just as relevant to your health as... Uh, Nice cup of coffee in the morning. Mm-hmm. It gets the bowels yeah. moving, too, just like coffee. Oh, it gets the bowels <laughs> sprinting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll run to the bathroom after yeah. this bean juice. Yeah. You yeah. Got, you back Play a up. prank on your family. Yeah. But, <laughs> and everyone around you. Uh, well, I hope he got a new can of beans for all the trouble. I hope so, too. Mm-hmm. Florida man parks smart car in kitchen so it won't blow away. Just like those damn scooters, these smart cars are very small. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, yeah, the idea of a scooter getting shot around by a hurricane, scary. But a smart car, it's, it's huge. I that would, that would do some damage. I would imagine that this is a, a plan that this person had wanted to do for a while yes. and was looking for the excuse to actually do it. Yeah, that's I'm pretty, pretty sure much, I could drive my car into my kitchen. That's pretty much what they said. Yeah. Like, the, the, wife, the wife's car was in the garage. And he's like, I should probably put my car in the garage, uh, but I'd have to move all my shit out of the way. So, you know how I've been saying I could probably fit that car through through the double doors into the kitchen? I'm going to do it. And his family's like, no, it's not going to work. It's not going to fit. He's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to fucking make it and work. Then he, and then he shamed his family. He's like, he said it couldn't be done. There it is. My car's in the kitchen. Yeah. I'm going to put some towels underneath it just in case we don't get any oil on the floor. Yeah, exactly. But uh, the car's in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Now back it out. <laughs> Uh, anyways. New Jersey woman fell asleep in her parked car, woke to find it missing. I don't understand. Please, enlighten me. Well, she was sleeping in her car. And the car she woke busy. up, no car. So, she's a heavy sleeper and got moved this by... This is an 80-year-old woman. Oh, okay. Uh, it sounds like she got carjacked. You don't have your... as much sleep when you're 80 as you face death uh, every night and then miraculously come back to life in the morning. Yeah, wake up at like 4.30. Yeah, you just, uh, you, it's no longer sleeping for rest, it's blacking out. Yeah. Well, she was blacked out. Um, someone, it sounded like someone was trying to steal the car and then got in and was like, oh fuck, there's a person here. Well, I'm already here. She's out pretty cold, so let's just move her on over here, take the car, and good. And all of my Werther's originals were gone too. Yeah. Well, hopefully she gets her car. Don't, why, was, why is she driving? Hey, got, they got the car back. They found it like a mile away, ditched. You Listen, we give old people a lot of credit on this show. We're always saying, give them the trophies. <laughs> give them the be, driver's license. Li, no, that's where I draw the line. Get old people off the fucking road or test them. You know, I'll be generous. 70. 70 years old. Test them again. That is not that old. Test them again? I mean, yes, I agree with the testing. If they can pass, it's like give them the, give them the car. Hey, by, by that point... At 70 years old, you haven't had to take a driver's test in 55 years. I feel that's a like a pretty good grace period. That is true. Oh, geez. Got my driver's test coming up in another 20 years. Oh, God. Not looking forward to it. When you're 70, hopefully, you don't have shit going on anyway. I support this. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, what, are you busy? Take the fucking test, old man. Well, I mean, our generation is going to be busy when we're 70. We're going to be fucking working into the grave, but... Yeah. It'd be, retirement age will be like 90 in the year 20. Yeah, you're 70. You go out to the DMV. You people watch. Yeah, poop your pants a little bit. Poop your pants a little bit. Nobody's going to say anything. Yeah, what are they going to say? I wouldn't say anything. Probably move. <laughs> <sighs> Moving on. <laughs> Hundreds of escaped pigs lured back to farm with trail of hot dog buns. Mm. This is just like Hansel and Gretel. Yeah. Hundreds of pigs. They had escaped. Yeah, at least but, they weren't feral hogs. Yeah, they, well, that's the thing. Like, they had to get them back to the farm quickly because they go feral very fast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 30 to 50 feral hogs, bad enough. Hundreds of feral hogs? You don't want that. I hope um, someone doubles down on memes and brings 30 to 50 feral hogs to Area 51. Let me check it out. <laughs> <laughs> They're an invasive species to, to, all, to the Nevada desert now. The pigs all just fucking die. Yeah, immediately. From, uh, and then so. everyone eats the pigs. Yeah. 
cooked in the sun. It's gonna be like Lord of the Flies out there. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna throw a boulder on some poor poor bastard's head. Yeah. Yeah. The one in charge, the, he's going to smoke the, the Area 51 bong, the alien head bong on top of a SUV. And that's yeah. how it's going to, everyone's going to be like, oh, shut up. He's talking. Yeah. He's our king. Yes. Yeah, this, the funniest part about this pig story is uh, this, the town in Vermont where this happened, they, like, they fine farmers for every, like, escaped animal they have because it's bad for, like, traffic and shit. Yeah. So this man's, like... I, they probably won't actually prosecute it to the full extent, but by the letter of the law, he owes like ninety thousand dollars for all the escaped animals that uh, have been just like prowling around this town the last week. I don't think they'll make him do it. But, yeah, uh, I would hope not. That's a lot of money. For, yeah, it's a lot. But they are dangerous for some animals. Pigs, and he's like, oh, he's like, I didn't do it. And oh, I, someone, someone broke my fence and let the pigs out. It's not my fault. It's a good way to. Fuck someone's life over. Let, yeah. their, let their animals out, and then they get charged yeah. with all this money. It's not cool. Yeah, probably a prank. Yeah, you you get you're gonna make this guy pay ninety thousand dollars. You're probably gonna head straight from the, the courtroom down to uh, get yourself a bacon sandwich, and you're gonna enjoy it. But you're gonna you know, do you actually appreciate the the farmer who brought that bacon to your plate? Probably. I don't think so. Probably the government behind it. Need a little extra scratch for the end of the year. Not just government. Big government. Well, small big government. Small government. Yeah. <laughs> small government. Small government fits in a lot more nooks and crannies than big yeah, government. Yeah, yeah. We can sneak away from small government to open yeah. up a couple pens. No one's looking. Uh, moving on. Man falls through casino ceiling while trying to elude police. These are always the best. Yeah. Real galaxy brain move to fucking uh, go through the ductwork or in the in the attic of uh, a place. Yeah, and it's. I, w- I want more details about this. What happened is, uh, I don't remember what state it was in, but... Uh, the cops showed up at this casino. This guy sees the cops coming in, makes a beeline for the bathroom. The cops are like, that was weird. Why'd that guy run in the bathroom? So they go over there Diarrhea. and they're like, what are you doing in there? Well, fi- yeah, finally after like 15 minutes, they like, you know, get the door open. He's not in the bathroom. Where oh. did he go? He went Flushed up himself in, down the toilet. Went up in the ceiling tiles and then immediately just comically, hilariously fell out of the, the ceiling but was holding on to some wires. So he's he's not he's still up there, but barely. And then he fell and, on a craps uh, table, and it went boom seven out. <laughs> but the the cops they were there to look for someone else. They were not yeah. looking for this guy. Guilty. Cops. None of this had to happen. Yeah. He would have been fine. Yeah. But he got nervous. Don't get nervous. Yeah. Don't get nervous. Don't run Play the cops. Cool. Don't go to the bathroom and crawl up into the ceiling tiles and then try to. A lot of bad decisions. The ceiling tiles cannot support your weight. A child maybe. A grown adult male. No. You're gonna fall through. You're gonna look like a real dummy when you do it. <laughs> Angry customers pull gun over sold-out Popeye's chicken sandwiches in southeast Houston. Which is crazy because this happened, like, after they announced that it was gone. People are not dealing with the Popeye's chicken sandwich situation well at all. I've had about two or three flashbacks where I was like, damn, I wish I could get it right now. See, I I kind of feel lucky that I never had it. You don't know what to miss. I, I have, though... <laughs> It's funny, ever since, ever since I became aware of the Popeye's chicken sandwich, any restaurant I've gone to that has a spicy chicken sandwich on the menu, I've ordered it. Oh, yeah, like, I got That does sound pretty good, now that you mention it. I got ordered from a place called Raging Hot Chicken, and I uh, got, like, like, one or two down from the hottest. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it was really good, but it was almost a little too much. Like, it, yeah. I enjoyed myself. I wasn't dying, but, like, <laughs> I was like, now I really got to see what the hottest one is, because this is wild. But, uh... No, you'd like it. Yeah. You'd like it. Well, uh, it's gone. And it's not worth pulling a gun out over. Yeah, we don't. They don't know when it's coming back. But uh, no, no chicken sandwiches for anyone. So just leave the guns at home. Leave the guns at home. Yeah. Speaking of which, man sues Popeyes for running out of chicken sandwiches. Again, people are not taking this well. That, we need to get more people on the class action so they have to give out free coupons for chicken sandwiches so they can recreate. The yeah, mass everyone rush. with the coupon shows up at the same time. Like, oh God damn it! Oh. Yeah, this guy says that he wasted like a whole day traveling around town to various Popeye's locations. Wasting all that gas. Couldn't get himself a sandwich. And then he says he saw on Craigslist. People were selling it for like $100. He saw on Craigslist someone claiming to work at Popeye's was like, come around the back. I got, got him for like 25 bucks. And he went there and he gave someone 25 bucks and they just never came back. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Which is a great grift. It is a great grift. Yeah, but, like, judging by how people have been reacting to this, I would not want to get caught in that grift. No, no, Because you no, will get killed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, I, real, 
Should be back in sometime in September, I think uh, they said. We'll yeah. see. We'll see. About Around that. the Area 51 date, and then no one goes because they got to get this chicken sandwich instead. Yeah. Moving on. Builder hired to fix roof takes poo on it instead. <laughs> they just did nothing and just shit on it? They didn't fix the problem they were hired to fix. Just shit on it and left? Uh, yeah, they took a shit on it, and it's like some small town in England, so like the roofing guys, they were all taking like pictures of it. There's like a picture of the guy like taking a shit. It's like, isn't that funny? But they just didn't do any work aside from that? No, like they were, they were supposed to fix a leak yeah. and it was, you know, the roof remained leaky. But they did take a shit and they left it on the roof. Wow. And then the owner, like someone, so the people that shit up there, they posted on social media in small towns. So the owner saw it and he's like, what the fuck? That's my roof. And it's still leaking. And the leak smells like shit. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Who can you trust anymore? Not even roofers? Yeah, roofers more like poopers. Mm-hmm. Huge drugs bus seized at London's Gatwick Airport found to be vegan cake mix. You know, hearing the headline, I was like, dumb TSA or whatever the fuck the British version of TSA yeah. is. They had a picture of this shit. The man's carry-on, it was like fucking... Packed with it? Yeah, it was these bags all like not marked, all like tied into like... Well, yeah. And I'm like, what? Yeah, that looks like fucking drugs, you moron. What are you doing? Yeah. You, so, uh, you could understand. Uh, yeah, understandable. Like, it looked very suspicious. Did not look like something you're bringing to a bakery. So. There you go. I'm going to side with the airport police in this one instance. Wow. I know. Wow. You hate to see it. Yeah, you do. <laughs> New Russian spacesuit's lack of fly zipper threatens revered pee ritual. Yeah, so Yuri Gagarin... 58 years ago, before he launched into space, he really had to pee mm -hmm. uh, right before takeoff. And they were taking him right to the rocket, no bathroom around. So he, uh, he got out of the bus that was taking him to the rocket and uh, pissed on the side of the bus. Oh, okay, good. They were like on the back wheel. Yeah. And uh, ever since then, every Russian astronaut has pissed on the bus that takes them to the rocket. Even the lady astronauts? So the ladies, they will uh, pee into like... A, a, a jar or something and bring Seal it with it. them and then toss it on the bus. It's mm. a good luck charm. They just got to get a little footstool full on, or on the side of the bus. It, uh, <laughs> it's tradition. Well, I'm not saying it's right. Yeah. Well, anyway, the new Russian space suits. Um, button fly? It's some sort of different fly. You can't. You, you just can't. Yeah. It's like you're, you're sealed in there. You can't just whip it out and piss on the bus like you used to in the good old days. Yeah. Well, so... End of an era, I guess. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I do not like this. Yeah. I think they should go back to the old way. Yeah. Worked for that many years. Right. What's wrong? Yeah. It Anyways, worked. that's it. Yeah, watch your most recent video about uh, Jeremy Renner is a weird guy. And also, uh, we specifically told you not to go to Jeremy Renner's most recent YouTube video. What are you doing? Video, and uh, we said You guys not, are all narcs. We said not to yeah. comment about porno and Casey Anthony on there. And yet, when I woke up this morning, I checked and there are... Hundreds, possibly even thousands of comments specifically about porno and Casey Anthony. You guys are going to get us so, in fucking trouble. You're going to get us busted. We are, Jeremy Renner is probably really mad at us right now. I would assume so if he wasn't busy spending all of his money. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah, I've watched that. It's fucking, it's a wild ride. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, and then we also have a new episode of Tech News Day. And of course, if you're a Patreon supporter or a YouTube member, first of all, thank you. Second of all, uh, our exclusive podcasts are up there. So go to the community tab if you're on YouTube. Go to just our Patreon page and look at posts on Patreon. Thank you again for supporting the show. It, we really count on it and we rely on it. So thank you. And here's the videos that you should watch, the ones we just mentioned, the one about Jeremy Renner and Tech News Day. So check those out and we will see you very soon. Bye. Bye.